Let's create a to-do list application in React using TypeScript. For convenience, we're going to create our app by bootstrapping it with create React app. We can type yarn create React app. We will call our React app to do React TypeScript. And we'll want to make sure that we pass the TypeScript flag so the appropriate files and configuration are used. Once the app is built, let's edit it in our preferred code editor. Here we are. So within the source folder, we can see quite a bit has been added. So I'm going to first just go ahead and run the application. We can do this by typing yarn start. And our app opens on port 3000, and we have this fun little React animation. And this is kind of just the default out of the box uh, app setup from Create React App. So that's cool, but we don't want any of that for our to do list application uh, because we'd like to start from, well, almost scratch. So I'm going to remove a lot of these items from the source folder. We will remove app.css, we will remove app.test.tsx, we will remove index.css, uh, logo, and service worker. Okay, and so let's uh, go ahead and then go into our remaining TSX files and make sure we clean up the references to the files that we just deleted. We'll go into index.tsx, and we can see that we refer to index.css and service worker. Let's get rid of those. Now we have no service worker to register, so we can get rid of this. Now if we go to app.tsx, we can see we're bringing in the logo and CSS. Get rid of those. And then let's just get rid of all the returned content here. And instead, we're just going to return a div with hello world. And now if we go to our browser, we can see we're just seeing hello world. That's exactly what we want. Okay. Now that we're at this basic configuration, let's take a look at what our to-do list application should look like. We have this handy dandy mockup that we can pretend that our uh, designers gave to us. We can see that it has a few different sections that are mocked up. There is the to-do list item section that's at this lower level. It's a list item that has a checkbox indicating whether or not the to-do list item is completed. And then we also have the text of the to-do list item. At the next level, we have a to-do list that will contain uh, zero to many to-do list items. Finally, there's this other add to-do form where we're going to be able to type in a new to-do list item and append it to our list. So to start out with, let's start at this lowest level, this to-do list item component. As I go over to VS Code, if you're using VS Code as well, I strongly recommend that you go to the extensions tab and look for TSLint. And TSLint is going to basically highlight within your code editor uh, when you have linting issues associated with TypeScript. Uh, this becomes very helpful and can really speed up your development process. I already have it added, so I'm going to move forward. Let's touch uh, to-do list item dot tsx. Now we'll go into our to-do list item and create a React component so we can import React from React. Export const to-do list item and it'll take some props and then we are going to return a list item uh, with some content. We don't know what that is right now. We can see we're already getting an underline from our TS linter saying that parameter props implicitly has an any type. By default, the TS linter is not going to like if you have an implicit any type, and that's great. I really think you should have to uh, declare the type of your props. So let's do that. We know that since we are a to-do list item, we are going to probably have a prop here that is the actual to-do. So we can define our props as uh, an interface or a type. Uh, I'm just going to use an interface here and say interface to-do list item props. 
and we will say that we are going to have some to do. And this to do will probably have some text, that'll be a string, and some completion status, that will be a bool. So now, to basically say that our props are of this to-do list item prop, we first are going to say that, hey, this function here, to-do list item, is a React function component. And if we want to be a little more terse about it, which I like, uh, we can just get rid of that and say react.fc. Great. And so to be specific about props here, we can actually pass our to-do list item props as a generic. Great. So now we know that props has to have uh, a property to do. In fact, we can just go ahead and destructure right here within the function arguments and say to do. Uh, importantly, if we had accidentally said to do's or had some typo in to do, we're now getting an underline saying to do's uh, does not exist on type uh, to do list item props. So this is good, this is protecting us. Okay, so within this list item, let us create a label. And within this label, let's create an input of type checkbox. And then within the label as well, we are going to uh, pass our to do dot text. And to determine whether or not our input uh, is checked, we can pass to do dot complete. Okay. So of course, if we now look at our application, we still have hello world because we haven't referenced this to-do list item. Let's go back to app.tsx and remove this hello world. And let's use our to-do list item. Okay. If we just try to throw it in there by itself, we get an error because we know that we need a to-do. So let's create a couple to-dos. We can, we can say const to-dos equals an array of to-dos. And so this will have text, walk the dog, and complete is true. And then we'll do another one, text, write app, and complete is false. By the way, we might also want this to-dos to conform to what our to-do list item should look like. So perhaps this is one we might consider making a type. We can say type to-do equals text string and complete boolean. So now our to-dos is of type array, and that array takes a generic and we'll say it's an array of to-dos. So since these to-dos fit within this description of a to-do, we're in good shape. Of course, if we typoed and said compult, we'll get an error because this is not specified within our type of to-do. Great. Of course, there's no use in declaring this type here and then also kind of having it declared here. So instead, what I propose is that we make a types file. So what we can do is create a file. We'll call it types.ts. So we can take this type to do out of our app, go into our types.ts, put it there, except let's just export it. And so now within app here, we can import are to do from our types file. Furthermore, if we go back into our to do list item, uh, we can also just delete this because it's now redundant and import to do. So that's very cool. We can have a to, uh, types file and declare our types there. But what if we didn't want to have to import every time we needed to use them? The cool thing is we can actually rename the types file. So we can say uh, move types ts to types.d.ts. And this makes it a type declaration file. 
And what's cool about that is we no longer have to export the types, but the TypeScript compiler will know that these types are declared for the project to use. So I can now remove this import and yeah, it still knows what types is. I can also remove the import from our to-do list item.tsx and yeah, it knows what this type is. Cool. So now whenever we have more types to declare project-wide, we can add it to this types declaration file and be pretty comfortable that we'll be able to import it without saying any import statements at the top. Okay, so we've got this array of to-dos. So let's add a couple to-do list items to our app and see it in action. So for our first one, we will just say the to-do list item is to-dos and just the first to-do item. Go back to our application and yeah, it's checked. Oh, we don't have a line through, so let's do that right now. Let's go back into our to-do list item.tsx and we will say within this label, there's a few ways we could do this. We might think that we'll pass it a style prop and say that text decoration is going to be equal to if to do.completes is true, then it'll be line through. Otherwise, there will be no text decoration. Go back to our application. It looks good, but I don't actually like declaring styles in line like this. I'd prefer to have a class. So let's just create a to-do list item.css file. And within that CSS file, we can create a complete class that has our text decoration equal to line through. And then with our to-do list item.tsx, we can import to-do list item.css. And we'll go ahead and remove that style and just say class name equals. Again, we can use this ternary operator to say it's either complete or undefined. And what's nice is that the if this resolves to undefined, then there will be no class attribute on our label. So we go back to our app and it still looks good. So let's make sure it also looks good if we add another to-do list item. We'll go back to app.tsx and uh, we're going to have to create a fragment here. So react fragment. And above here, let's do a new to-do list item. Our to-do is going to be to-dos one. Okay, cool. So we now have uh, walk the dog and write app.